everyone live. Everybody, how you doing? How's it going, guys? Hey, hey. Caleb. Hey, everyone else. Hop in. One, one of one truth. We got Buck. We got Taylor. We got Mac. We got Jared. We got a full full crowd tonight. Good group. Good group. Solid. That's fine. So far, so good. A lot of base people in here. We're going to talk about <laughs> one of my favorite people, Lou Rockwell, who wrote my favorite book, Against the Left. So That's your favorite one, huh? It's my, uh, this is my favorite book I've ever read. There we go. Is, is it really? Cover? Yeah, it's a hardcover. Oh, I love nice. it. I got paperback. Elite. No, it, is, it is my, it's up there for my favorite books. Like, it's like top three for sure. It's, this is my litmus test. If I hand you this book and you don't enjoy it, I don't want to be friends with you. That's this, fair. This, this is my litmus test. Did but, you get this? No. Oh, oh man. That's Hardcover a- and a signature. That's <laughs> true oh. VIP package, dude. Mm. Buck's just showing off. And the old podcast name in there? Oh, Death to Tyrants. Yeah. See oh, if you cool. can show- o- OG Buck fans know. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. If you give them enough money to help put this book out you you get the hardcover <laughs> that's amazing that's cool that's very it. cool yeah I, I i love that book um i actually just re-listened to like i bought the physical whenever it came out like as soon as it came out and then i listened to it on audiobook because i have like an hour commute to work every day now mm-hmm. so i finished the book because it's so short and like literally a day um but i forgot like it reads and obviously hearing it on audiobook, it, it reads like a new paleo libertarian like manifesto. And that's why like it's my favorite thing. And like uh what what is it? The the state, what is it, the left, right, and the state? It's very just like just heavy, like libertarian theory kind of thing. And then against the left, just out of nowhere, um Lou essentially just revived like the paleo libertarian years. And I was just like, All right, like back on track. And that was when I, I first started reading like the Rothbard Rock, Rockwell reports like consistently. So it was it was very sick that like that those things like timed together for me because I was I mostly just read like theory before that. And then I was starting to read like the the 90s newsletters and stuff. And once you have all the theory down, this stuff to me is more enjoyable. Yeah, uh, because yeah, I think I'm not sure. It, cu- cultural aspects of of life are more relatable probably than than like t- complete abstract theory uh and and i love that he in the book against the left it's not just lose opinions on things he's he's quoting mises and rothbard from old old uh writings which is which is really cool too it's not just this one crazy guy arrived at these new opinions you know in the 90s or something like that that's what i love too yeah, the Mises quote on uh, segregation, segregating the kids from the parents in the public schools brings neurosis and sexual degeneracy. Might be my favorite quote ever. Like it is, it's funny, but also you read it, you're like, yeah, it's kind of true. You look at the public schools now with all the pansexual nonsense, you're like, it, he's not wrong. Yeah, and I love how I love how Lou's not afraid to. Well, obviously he's not afraid. He's not. He's not really afraid to do anything. But like he quotes Mises on cultural issues, which a lot of people won't do. And that's why people think that like Mises was like this, you know, just like cultural, like almost like a cultural leftist, but like really, really hard on like, you know, good econ or whatever. And that's why people are like, oh, yeah, Rothbard's bad, like or the Mises Institute, like ruins the name of Mises. And then like read the cultural yeah. thought of read the cultural thought of Ludwig von Mises and then say that the Mises Institute is more right wing than Ludwig von Mises. It's it, just it's- not true. It happens all the time, too. You see it on Twitter. You see it on Facebook. It's everywhere. Every time that the Mises Institute comes out with anything, even vaguely right wing. I remember. Do you guys remember uh, Jeff's uh, wonderful speech and uh, where he mentioned the blood and soil thing? Of course. A a brilliant speech. I mean, absolutely wonderful. One of my favorite guys ever. And immediately after that was. What is the Mises Institute becoming a bunch of fascists now? Like what? Like they're selling the name of Mises and blah 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 blah. And it's just so obvious that Mises, if you know anything about Mises, <laughs> that he was not a cultural leftist uh, in, in any sense of the any any sense of the term. He was not a libertine. He was not what Rothbard would call a modal libertarian. He was a right winger. He was a right winger, and it's it's undeniable. And it's 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 a little disturbing when 
there's that many people out there that hold those views and that they have the platforms that they have and they don't understand this basic stuff. Right. Yeah. And it's, uh, it, it's funny that, uh, who was it that, that Magnus Panvidia dude, like whenever mm-hmm. he said that, like he was talking about like right wing libertarians, like, and something about Mises. And I was like, bro, Mises joined the fatherland front. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> was just like come on, man. <laughs> yeah. But I he, he called Hitler, he called Hitler gay. Like, I mean, he literally <laughs> heard that Hitler was gay because he was, you don't know this, Caleb? Yeah. And Mises <laughs> literally inferred that Hitler was gay because he was part of the boarding houses um, that what you saw rise in Austria at the time after World War I, where a lot of people were in these boarding houses. In these boarding houses, you saw the rise of homosexuality. And Mises said, there's no way we're funding that. It's causing a rise in homosexuality. And yeah, by the way, uh, Hitler was in there. Uh, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Hitler, Hitler made Mises flee Austria, so he had to take a pot shot. It was called yeah, call was... gay from across the world. <laughs> 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 it was like proto Twitter when you could call somebody gay over the internet. He just he had to do it just in the right. That that was that, that was Mises' first tweet. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Uh, speaking of against the left, I, I've got the book here. I've got a lot of notes in it. And one of the, I'd like to read a little, it's a very short quote. It's like two sentences, but, uh, it, it's so important for people to understand this about the book and about Lou. It's on page 55. Uh, it says a central theme of this book is the importance of the traditional family for preserving our liberty, liberty and civilization. Unless we can pass on our heritage to our children, we are doomed. And I, I can't think of a, a better two sentence statement to, to sum up this book and the, the thoughts of paleo libertarianism than that. Um, it, it's so, so obviously true. Yeah, I was just, but prior to getting on this live stream, I, I was on Pete's show and he brought up that there was a libertarian, I mean, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was part of that Center for a Stateless Society. And for those of you familiar with that group, this you probably see where this is going. But he had said a quote like, "the the traditional family leads to tyranny." <laughs> and it's like, well, and if you're a if you are a an anarchist in the uh, leftist sense, that rings true, right? Because the 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 center of authority that we derive all just authority from is the family, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the way leftists look at this: is that they hate all forms of authority, right? And we don't. Whereas paleos, we don't hate all forms of authority. Authority is great. It's just just authority, true authority that is important to us. We hate false authority, not because it's authority, but because it is, in essence, egalitarianism. It is a leveling of uh, unequal actors and non-truly elite people um, that to, to a higher level than they deserve. We embrace authority. We love it. And I can definitely see why, why they would say something like that. Yeah, I think when I first started getting involved in the liberty movement, I'll call it, before I'd encountered Mises Institute types or anybody associated with them, I kept constantly, and this is why I appreciate Lou Rockwell and and Murray Rothbard and, and Mises to a certain extent, is because I, I was getting involved, I was meeting all these people. I grew up Christian, my parents didn't, but they always instilled that in us. And I grew up with a strong family and... I, I mean, I've joked that I'm a hopping because I had a good dad, but it's not really a joke. Like, it's just so important. And I was getting attacked for being Christian or even alluding to Christian values. I, I'm not a person that throws that in people's faces. Some people don't even know until I say it to them. They're like, oh, really? Because I'm not that kind of person that makes everything about that all the time. But finding these people who understand that those values, whether Christian or not, just a strong family in, is important was I I felt like I was at home for the first time and I was almost to the point where I was not even going to refer to myself as libertarian at all. I didn't know what I was. I knew I wasn't those people though. And then I found people like Lou Rockwell and, and all these people at the Mises Institute. And I finally felt like I had a place where I could be proud to just refer to myself as a libertarian and say, I am right wing and I am a libertarian and these are my people. And that's one of the reasons why Lou and, and all the guys at the Mises Institute and everything to do with them is so important to me personally. 
Right. Um, well, the one and only article that I've written for, for Hoppian.org was <laughs> taking libertarianism back. And, and I remember, Mac, we, we were talking about that before I wrote it. And we were like, we were, and I remember Jared and you and uh, the people in the group chat, we were all like debating whether we should just drop the word altogether. And that's why I wrote it. And, and really my main defense was just like, if Rothbard didn't drop it, if Lou hasn't dropped it, if Hoppe hasn't dropped it, like we just have to take it back from the people who either A, don't read, or B, have read and want to subvert it. And uh, the second one's harder because they they actually have brains. But, I mean, it's just so important, like, to take that, you know, like I say, I say paleo now. I, I call myself a paleo libertarian because that's that's very accurate or hoppy and i i kind of just go back and forth between those two but i mean yeah the like right wing cultural while maintaining that the ideal society is a private law society is what we should be focusing on as the good libertarians the bad ones the center for stateless society people those are the bad ones those are our enemies whether they want to use the term or not we have to take it back from them right and And that's a Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Jared. Um, For me, the biggest thing, not even just necessarily about the word libertarian, but it has a lot to do with it. I feel like I just look at people like Lou Rockwell and how long they've been holding this mantle almost single handedly. The all these people that came before us, Murray Rothbard, you know, the dreaded late Rothbard, Mises, you know, all these people that came before us. Do you not think that they also we have evidence they went through the same things people trying to subvert them people trying to infiltrate and sometimes successfully obviously they wrote about it how this happened and for me it's just i can't look at everything that they have done and one not respect the hell out of all of them lou rockwell included obviously that's what the stream is about but also just stand up and say enough is enough you are not taking another thing from me family is important these things are important these ideas are important this is what i actually believe is the best for a just and freer society. And I don't mean that in in the Lulbert way. I I truly believe that. And I I think listening to people, I saw somebody on Twitter, I don't know if it was one of you guys, it might've been Caleb said that, you know, you said this book is my litmus test. And, um, oh, it was Matt Erickson. He, He tweeted out and he said, everyone says, oh, late Rothbard is their litmus test. My litmus test is Lou Rockwell. Because I think he's one of the least, at least in a lot of circles that I'm in, the normie kind of libertarians, he's so little talked about. And we really should start talking about him more. I mean, I'm wearing a Hoppe shirt. It's great. The memes are great. Talking about Murray Rothbard's great. But Lou Rockwell deserves so much respect. And I'm very glad that I got to basically single-handedly because of Poe Bishop, go to Mises Institute in 2018 and tell Lou Rockwell, thank you for everything that you do because he just deserves it so much. And I just want to live in a world where Lou Rockwell is as, is as wididly known in libertarian circles as and respected as Ron Paul is. That's, that's the world I want to live in and because I don't think we do right now, but that's the goal because I just, he just deserves it. <laughs> and yeah. Not a, yeah. Oh, sorry, Jared. But, I, I, I was just going to piggyback off of what Taylor said earlier. And, you know, uh, the debate between dropping the word libertarian or adopting something new, I've always been on the side of I don't care anything about that term. And I, I absolutely respect Taylor's opinion. And he makes some excellent points. And I, I'm not turning this into a debate at all, I promise. Um, but this is the same, same exact same question that... Lou and Rothbard were facing it at the time, right? When, when during the Rothbard Rockwell report, they were facing this exact issue and we're dealing with it again. And it's because we didn't succeed the last time. Right. And and it kind of died and went away and now we're back. Right. And, and we shouldn't let that go. You know, Rothbard said the reason that we needed the paleo distinction, and we do need a distinction of some kind. If you want to call it paleo libertarians, you want to call it hoppianism, if you want to call it, you know, whatever, if you want to call it, uh, what, what's that term that I like? Uh, Austro libertarian is Austro- what a lot of people use. Austro libertarian or, or like ordo naturalism or something like that. Th- those are all acceptable Nat- terms. Natural order anarchist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's something like, like that. One. The, but Rothbard's premise, and he wrote about this in the Rothbard Rockwell report, is that you know we need that distinction because we're not the same. 
we're not the same as those other people where we're, we, uh, you know, he said, <laughs> funnily enough, I mean, if you ever read Rothbard, you know, he has a penchant for being uncaring of whether, whether or not that he's going to be offensive. But, um, he said, you know, the, the modal libertarian is, uh, a moocher, a bunko artist and, uh, and an outright crook, right? Uh, he's just got a brilliant way with words. And and those are not the people that we want to associate with, right? We don't want those people in our society. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to live with those people. I wouldn't want to live with people who are obviously terrible people or, you know, degenerates or drug users and, and things like that. And when I say drug users, I don't care if you smoke weed or whatever. Like, I'm talking about, like, you're, you're shooting up meth or you're smoking meth or you're shooting up heroin, right? You're, you're, a drag on society. You're not a, a decent person. You not a net, your a net taxpayer. <laughs> yeah, you're not a net taxpayer. Exactly. And, and you know, at the end of the day, I think sadly, um, there are way more of those liber quote unquote libertarians than there are of us. And it's important that we show the distinction and that we make it clear that those people are not the same as us. And, and it's a uh, it, that that's part of the goal of why I created hopping.org is is for that reason is we gotta we gotta stop those people but anyway um yeah uh, Lou and and Rothbard with the paleo thing I think that that is at least needed or something else right um as long as we're making the distinction that's all I really care about well, yeah and that's I mean we are living in a new paleo movement. I mean, uh, in the very, very early start of it. I mean, Trump was definitely the start. Yes. And I think I think Lou saw that opportunity and why he wrote against the left whenever he did was because of the Trump presidency. I, I don't think the timing was uh, was was um, coincidental. Yeah, coincidental. Um, where you see, you know, the Dave Smith and like Nick Fuentes uh, debate like that doesn't happen. Uh, that doesn't happen unless we're in like a new paleo, like the right, the real right, meaning good conservatives, paleo conservatives. Yeah. And, and paleo libertarians or right libertarians discussing how we can actually move forward politically and, and work together. I, I think we are definitely in either the beginning or the midst of a very, very important time in libertarian political history and just the history of the right in general. And we could, I mean, it could get squandered again. I mean, we saw it with how many brilliant things that Rothbard and, and Lou Rockwell were writing about and Pat Buchanan at the time and the Pat Buchanan campaigns, how they should have been successful. But like, but it, it, it's hard not to see the, the mirroring of like where we are at now compared to where they were whenever they were writing the Rothbard Rockwell report in the 90s. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I think one of the challenges for libertarians is to realize that and to quit referencing people on the right uh, like you're in 2005 or something like that. Like it's George crazy, Bush, John McCain, uh, Mitt Romney, because it's if you're still doing that, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. You're doing liberty. If you want to use that, you're doing that a disservice because there's a, a lot of people now on the right that are like Taylor said kind of mirroring, mirroring uh, some of the folks that were Buchanan voters and whatnot in the 90s. And Chronicles Magazine now is having, uh, it, it's flourishing. It's not quite where it was, but I, I think people like Pedro Gonzalez can get us there. Certainly when you have someone like Tucker Carlson, although uh, I wish Lou would sit with him for a long time and discuss economics, maybe, we'll, maybe that'll happen at some point. But when you have someone who's essentially fairly red pilled on a lot of issues, probably more so than he's allowed to even let on as the biggest show on cable TV. This is certainly not uh, our, the boomer generation of, of uh, George Bush neocons uh, owning the right anymore. Isn't that amazing? I mean, I mean, can we all just take a second to, to reflect back on like, if you, if you're, you know, a Ron Paul guy from 2008 or 2012, right. Especially 2012, my God, especially 2012, like you have to be ecstatic right now. Like there is no black pill right now. The neocons are taking L's everywhere. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're getting destroyed and there's this old right contingent that's growing again and we have a prime opportunity right now 
I mean, I, I it, it's not been this this uh, I guess the 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 soil has not been this fertile in a very long time, and we got to take advantage of it. I you also me? think, sorry, Taylor. Oh, you're, you're um, good. I think it's really big that we're also we are seeing the guys that consider themselves paleo conservatives. I will see them all the time make fun of libertarians and then make the distinction. Oh, but not the Mises people, not yeah. the people that read Hoppe, not those guys. And that's yeah. huge. That's, yeah. that's so big. And I don't think it's not that I don't think people recognize it. I think the right people, so to speak, that we that we make so angry are mad that the connections are being made. And that also tells me that we're on the right track because they're they're just writhing out in pain that we are making those connections and making actual changes towards, you know, what what they allegedly want to move towards. So that's huge. And and just to speak to that, I mean, shout out to every single person who's listening to this, that every time you see someone talk shit about, quote unquote, libertarians, you say, hey, not us. We're not those people. If you make that distinction, high five to you, because you should definitely be doing that. Call it out wherever you can. We're not those people. We don't do that. This is who we are. You know, read the Mises Institute. When I see a right winger, a hardcore right winger reference Mises.org, I'm ecstatic. I mean, it's amazing, right? I mean, I, can you imagine Red State, Red State in 2012 or 2013 saying anything positive about Mises? I mean, it's just, it, it's just insane. Yeah, and and that's that's funny that we're talking about how the right is remaking its image post Trump new paleo era libertarians on on the internet you you know i mean jared you were there back in the day whenever if you said hoppa's name on twitter you got chastised and that's not a libertarian blah 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 it's and a, now yeah. anytime you see somebody on the right talking about you know um like how bad libertarians are there's there's 20 30 guys uh on that are right libertarians saying like not not Hoppians, not good Rothbardians. Libertarians are remaking their own image just as much as the quote unquote conservatives are. And that's where I think that the, like on both sides that, like you said, the, the soil is, is going to bear some fruit, I think. I agree. Yeah. One of the things and uh, against the left, I, I keep this book in my car normally um, because I have been so many Twitter arguments with, with these left libertarian types. I'll literally just open the book and screenshot the argument. Hmm. This thing, it's so, like, uh, so many points in there that was so succinctly made. And it's kind of like, I don't need to make the argument. I can just pick a picture of a new walk where the wasp bot did it and they did it better. And that's one thing about the book is like, it's not only, I was in the work truck with my dad and my phone all connected to the Bluetooth and started playing this book, let it ride the whole way. Dad loved it. He only watches like Fox News. Mm -hmm. So Lee Walker can only like, be interested in everyone always and like, my age and that kind of stuff. He's also, because so, like, he's boomer energy, he's attracted to all the boomers. Like, if he was on Fox News, he'd be the biggest guy. And that'd be only would be the smartest guy. He'd be the most popular because of his boomer energy. <laughs> That's why I, I love him so much. The, the boomer energy in the environmental chapter, environmentalism chapter is my favorite saying ever. Yes, that is good. I, I have a question for you, Caleb. Mm -hmm. Um you're kind of new to libertarianism, and, and I, I'm, that's not a knock. I just mean within the last couple of years, correct? Yeah, one year. What 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 brand of libertarianism did you come to first? Uh, George Orgerson. That was oh, uh, oh, that's right. That's, that's the right. one who got me into the uh, Libertarian Party, and then also it was the reason I left the Libertarian Party. Yeah, sure. Oh, wow, that, that's George Orgerson populism. Yeah. It's actually that's kind not... of hilarious. I, I tagged her on a tweet <laughs> recently saying uh, a year ago I was watching Ben Shapiro. And reading his books, and now I am reading Yarvin, Hopper, and Burnham. Thank you, Joe Jorgensen. And she kind of she liked my tweet, which is kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, it kind of makes you wonder sometimes that some of these people, if they're not listening to what their handlers are telling them, you know, like right. you need to do this, you need to appeal to these people. This is how we're going to win. And if it's not really what they believe, you know, it. it it's possible, uh, just as it's possible on the other way, too, which is uh, you get a lot of people that say, you know, oh, yeah, Hop is great. And then five seconds later, they're talking about affirmative action and how we really need, you know, all these, I don't know, social welfare programs and stuff. Right. Like it's it's crazy. I saw someone on the timeline not long ago um, that uh, said, you know, I'm a libertarian and I believe in all of these social programs. I'm like, 
I saw that. What? Yeah, that that was that <laughs> one. That was that one. Uh, uh, she was like that. Uh, she's like a amateur Pornhub girl, like straight uh, of up. Course. Of and course. And she ran. She ran in the LP. I remember that because I, I remember all of us like kind of clowning on her, um, a, a while ago. And then I saw that tweet, and I was like, she would like that. That I am not shocked. A hundred percent that that tweet just came out. Um, Talking about. Um, sorry, I. Don't want to cut you off, Taylor. No, you're good. I was done. Um, just talking about kind of boomer energy and how a lot of the <laughs> I'm reading the reading the chat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, talking about how a lot of the boomers are. I I have especially noticed after after post uh, Trump's loss, what, regardless of what you think about it. Um, my in laws are very big. Well, not so much anymore, but they were very big Fox News people. And I have just straight up heard them say, guest democracy doesn't work. That's insane to hear that from people who voted for Mitt Romney and those type of people. And then having real conversations with them. And I have like mentioned top, but they haven't read him. But the fact that I can just be having these conversations with just your, your average run, run of the mill Republican boomers is crazy. And that's why I kind of like the populism route because I do think. You know, it's discouraging when you see kind of, I think Jared said, these people saying, I like HAPA, but, and then they say social programs. But the fact that these people feel like they need to signal that they like HAPA is huge. Or Lou, Ro like, or Lou Rockwell or Murray Rothbard. The fact that these people feel they need to signal to paleo libertarianism just to get their foot in the door, like keep pushing. I feel like that's a huge signal that it's working and it's because of the, the, Pay the way that was paved by people at the Mises Institute and people like Lou Rock. Well, 100 percent, 100 percent. I just to add to that. And this is why gatekeeping is important. This is a very big topic for Mac. Right. Which is, you know, we, we have to we, we've we've uh, we've sowed that we've uh, torn up the field. Right. Like when we're getting ready to plant and we can't let invasive species come in either. Right. Right. And keeping yep. those people out is, is is critical. We've got to be able to gatekeep certain people out of at least paleo right we got to be able to say hey you know if you're uh you know jack murphy you're probably not a paleo right <laughs> oh, <no>. like <laughs> it's probably not the place for you right and it's okay to say hey you know go find another place to be it's it's fine to say you know you're not welcome uh, and, and that is, it, it's a core freedom of association is yeah, freedom a, of association. That's yeah, our it, thing, right? It's such a core libertarian principle that you'd think more people would be like, yeah, man, if you don't think that, uh, you know, if you don't think that I am involved with you, then, you know, whatever, well, I'll go my own separate way, but that's not the way it works. Is it Trotsky saw to that? Well, and you know, I talked about earlier, I was getting pushback from people just expressing just general traditional values, whatever, whatever those are these days The I'm speaking like the actual sense, like strong family and things like that. I was getting pushback. But looking back, I realized that was people gatekeeping me. That's mm -hmm. what they were doing. I was trying to push in and saying, well, what about this? I'm reading these guys at Mises Institute and everything, all these articles and things. And that was them going, no, no, we don't do that here. And I'm glad that they did it in a way because it led me down this path and there were people on the other end to accept me and, you know, teach me and what, what book should I read? What should I actually be reading to actually look into this stuff? And I'm glad that they did. And I just want to be able to do that for other people and keep bad, you know, untrustworthy people out, but also be the person welcoming people in that respect people like Lou and, and all these guys, because I think that's one of the best things we can do other than, you know, making changes in our own lives, obviously, and locally, which is huge. But just doing that for people and also keeping bad people out is huge. And I think it's obviously something that these guys advocate. Every every paleo libertarian does ha has no issue with telling people, wait a minute. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the, to, to just go on that. Yeah. Like when we talk about gatekeeping, we're just talking about keeping bad people out. We're not talking about good people who don't know a lot right. staying out. Absolutely. We want we want new people. We want kids who are trying to find their way politically or economically. I mean, I came into this mostly through like the economics route and then I got really into it through the philosophy route. Um, but like people who are curious and like if you don't know anything – and you just see us on Twitter, like you see Jared, one of his tweets blow up. And then you're like, I'm going to look into this guy. And then you say something dumb. 
as long as they're of like you're not saying it with malice you're just like you don't know a lot yet that's cool yeah. we'll help you out like right that's what i we're mean here if, you're, for. if you're an ass i'm gonna check you i'm gonna <laughs> yeah. check you hard right but if you genuinely ask a, a curious question you can look at my timeline i respond to those people very cordially I don't care right. where you're coming from. I'll respond to you cordially as long as you afford me some respect, right? You afford me respect because you want information. I'll afford it to you right back. I don't care who you are. And that goes for everybody. Yeah, there was that there was that kid. I I, I don't I don't know who he was. I think mutuals with a couple of our a couple of our boys on Twitter. And he uh, I put up that bookshelf pick and he was like, I'm surprised Hoppa hasn't pushed Khan off the bookshelf. And I was like, Hop is a Kantian dude. <laughs> like, I like, like I felt, I felt bad, but like I'm not like I'll, I'll follow that dude right now because I feel bad because I wanted to. But it was just like I'm not gonna be a dick because, and I'm not gonna be like, oh, you're a dumbass. Like that was just that's just not nice. And quote but, tweet like, him and destroy him. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just well, like what's I the point of that? Yeah, I just responded like I was just like Hop is a Kantian dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like I wasn't trying to, but that's like that's like gatekeeping but like a in like a nice way where it's just like oh yeah like maybe maybe like just it's okay it to disagree bit. yeah it's okay yeah. to disagree yeah. right I, I have a feeling i i see a lot uh especially online but in person more than online really uh that people are very hard to push back right they're very they're very um most people are very malleable in person and i don't know if that's a you know it's just weakness of spirit or what it is, but often I'll find I find that uh, if you challenge somebody, they'll just be like, "Well, you know, maybe," and they'll kind of they'll kind of break if you're persistent, right? Um, and, and we have to be careful not to be those people because if you give them a you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile, right? So don't give them anything. I had a, a personal experience with with this uh, in person thing, and and a friend of mine, I won't even say who he is, but a, a, a guy I consider a very friend. Uh, friendly uh, was at my house at an event where Tho Bishop was at. And the guy said, I'm going to go challenge Tho. His whole thing about Trump and DeSantis, ah, I don't like it at all. Why? I, I'm going to go challenge him. And they, they talked for maybe 10 minutes and he came back and I go, well, and he goes, he's pretty persuasive. I, <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and I said, see, so I, you know, that's just a perfect example of if, if someone's trying to challenge you and they're coming from a not a place of malice, you know, open up to them, explain things. And you don't have to uh, pretend it's a Twitter fight and, and dunk on them or something like that or win the argument, because a lot of people are more open minded than they seem online, probably. And so that that when I saw that, I was like, wow. You were a you were a dyed in the wool LPMC guy. The LP is the only route, and you came back going. So might have been right on that, and we've seen that online. Even I, I think we've all yes. seen so knows. We've seen these hit him convert some people, and I suspect there's more coming that way in the near future than than there has been even in the past. God, I hope so. Yeah, I I don't want to seem like I'm uh, you know sitting on those back, but like he's he did a lot. He's done a lot in a very short period of time. And, um, he's, he brought me out of a lot of my, um, I guess, black pilledness there for a while. Cause I mean, I've been in this a long time guys, uh, like a really long time, maybe not as long as buck. Uh, I, I don't know, but, um, a, a long time. And there's been some really low moments. You know, I remember when online, especially if you even mentioned, paleo libertarianism or you mentioned you know late rothbard or anything like that you you got you got either banned from wherever you were or you were reported it or you if you were in person people would just not talk to you i mean it was that bad for a little while there and you know it, you find ways to cope with that but it was it got pretty bad there and, and tho really helped with a lot of that and lou is obviously there would probably be no tho without lou right? Right. right and, and you know, you, you you see a lot of these people that uh, Lou especially Lou's done so much, but also people, you know, that have been paleos for a long time and never gave it up. Um, you know, there there's a couple of authors out there who uh, who I'm lax to mention at the moment, but um, they they kept they kept the the light on, you know, 
and those people deserve so much credit. Lou, especially Lou, Lou stands above all of them because he did it this whole time. He started an institute. We were collapsing as a as a movement when Lou started the Mises Institute. I mean, he saved the whole ideology basically. It could have been relegated to history as some kind of joke, and he pulled us out of darkness. That's he deserves a freaking statue for that alone. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I forgot to mention it earlier, but and I wanted to say it like I'm not here without Lou Rockwell. I I am not a libertarian without Lou Rockwell. I'd probably be something else. Like yeah, when I was when I was 16, 17 years old, I was calling myself a libertarian, but I didn't know what libertarianism was. So I would have just moved on to something else. If I didn't discover the Mises Institute and Hoppe and Lou and, and the writings of Lou Rockwell and especially like the Mises YouTube page speeches mm. from Mises U and everything like that, I'm not a libertarian. I, I'm I'm something else by now. But because I because of Lou Rockwell, I I'm here and I I love still calling myself a libertarian and i love like being a libertarian not saying that it's like the most important thing about me i think that's incredibly toxic but like but like it's just lou is the reason why i feel incredibly comfortable and confident in that i'm doing the right thing politically whenever i talk about it or whenever i do anything that involves politics actually you brought up something i was going to bring up um, there's a lot of great lou Walker lexus on youtube just a, a lot of great ones. Uh, I spent the day pretty much watching them. Just so many good ones. Um, he had one on egalitarianism. Egal it was a vote, but also about egalitarianism, specifically on their family, how it affects it. If anyone listening to this hasn't watched that, go watch it. So I'm, I'm going to put a link in the description because it's fantastic. And then he did a lecture. Um, he basically was talking about the scholastics because he's Catholic. And that's why I like about him a lot. That he's Catholic and he ties a lot of things in the episode. Um, He's like, he about the, the economic view of the scholastics. And one of the funny parts in it is his mic is a little bit off to the side like this. And mid-speech, Walter Block walks up there and corrects the mic and then walks back. And it's just hilarious to me. Just seeing Walter Block like, walk up there, move the mic, and sit back down. But, but yeah, there's a lot of great Lou Walker lectures. Does anybody have any like favorite lectures from him you've seen? Or? Open borders are an assault on pro private property. Uh, the, that's, the, that's the article, but the speech name is Open Borders, a Libertarian Reappraisal. Mm -hmm. And that is my favorite Lou Rockwell speech. Yeah. And I article. Do. I mean, that is just, it's just wonderfully done. I mean, he cites, he cites Nation by Consent. Yeah. He cites Hoppe on, um, on, from Democracy, the God that Failed. And I'm pretty sure the economics and ethics of private property sites in there. And it's just like it's a it's a real theoretical argument for libertarian rights being against open borders while making it completely accessible to people who are new to it. And yeah. Lou is Lou is very, very good at that. And that and not a lot of people can do that. I don't think I'm somebody who is that good at that. And Lou is incredible at it. You know, and there's there's a pervasive theme throughout Lou's uh, career, I guess you could say, or his life. He's very brave. Um, he he yeah. pulls no punches. Um, that article uh, at the time was not it, it, it was the time for that article to happen. Right. And it was time for that speech to happen. But it takes a man of good character to do it and do it like Lou did it. Um, and Lou has, has published some really controversial stuff over the years, you know, and I will defend every single thing that he has ever written because he's right. <laughs> and, and today, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. I agree with that. I, I agree. I agree with that. I, I agree with his, uh, article on, uh, Rodney King, uh, Murray defended that. Uh, that was a, it was a good article and he was right. I, I, I mean, how, yeah, nothing, yeah. nothing. What he said, and nothing, nothing, especially in the the Rodney King article, nothing about what he said was wrong. It nothing. might make you feel uncomfortable, right? And it's not just about like oh, owning the libs style, like right wing article where it's just like I know people are going to squeal at this. Everything that he said in that article was right and true from a libertarian rights perspective. I mean, it's just like it, it's just true. 
and, and like, yeah, you can you can try and disagree and, and and have this crazy emotional response to it because you just because cops did something that it's that it's automatically horrible and unlibertarian. Um, it's just not. I mean, if you really want to talk about these ideas seriously, you're going to have to uh, you're going to agree. Reality. You're going to agree with Lou Rockwell <laughs> on yeah. pretty much everything. There's a the, I, there's an all too pervasive thing theme in in libertarian um, I guess the ideosphere is that uh, anything that is done by the state now is automatically something that should never be done, and that's just a lie, right? I mean, it's just a lie because you know the state has co opted things that we know are important, and it's done that for a reason. It's co opted policing. Right. It's done everything it can to take it from the localist level that is possible and federalize it. That is the push and it will always be the push. They don't want local sheriffs telling the FBI to go away. And it's happened. Right there. I've seen several videos of local sheriffs arresting ATF agents. You know, you're not doing that here. You're not you're not doing this to these people you know that that's what we need more of let's push the other direction let's not just say well all policing's bad okay well you know state policing yeah sure it absolutely is but the the idea of policing itself is not it's a wonderful idea it's security right that's what we're looking for so let's push it in the other direction let's push it local let's push it decentralized and and you know when someone says hey the local sheriff needs to give way to the ATF or something, you know, blow those people away. Who cares? You know, like those, those are not, those are not the people that we need to see. And, you know, this, this theme in, in, in the libertarian audio sphere, it, it, it spreads across everything and Lou is so good at cutting through that BS. Rothbard was too. And, uh, you know, I love to see more articles of people taking on certain things and from a right wing perspective, you know, like, uh, you know, industrial or uh, not not industrial contractors, but uh, military contractors. You could do the same thing there. You know, like okay, yes, the Rand Corporation General Dynamics are terrible and they should be abolished and and gotten rid of and returned to you know the either the the people that are running you know the running the company and building these things or or their stockholders or what have you. Um, but you know, those types of weapon developers aren't going to go away. They're going to be around. There's going to be small groups that want these types of things. There's always going to be Smith and Wesson, right? I mean, somebody's going to want an RPG, you know, like this is this is stuff that's not going to go away. Let's look at these things from a right wing perspective and a libertarian's perspective at the same time, because to me, and, and I, I made this case many, many times is, you know, libertarianism is the most true expression of the right. And if we can't look through that view like Lou and then Lou and Rothbard and Hoppe do, then we're doing a disservice to those guys, and and we need to do better. Yeah, just kind of speaking to that point. I mean, we go back to the policing thing, and I feel like this is why people like Lou Rockwell are so demonized in this just the liberty movement in general. The people we might not necessarily want to ally with is because they are so effective. I mean, Taylor was talking about he wouldn't hear without Lou Rockwell. I wouldn't either. So Bishop doesn't invite me to the Mises Institute in 2018. I leave libertarianism just straight up. I just would have stopped and like, eh, political fad. I'll just keep doing my cosplay thing and not care about politics again because that was my original position. I was apathetic. I didn't care. And then I saw these young people with so much just still respect for Ron Paul and so got involved with the Mises Institute. And and Lou is just so effective and at making things palatable and with the policing thing and like being willing to portray things from a right wing perspective and not be stuck in this. The left and the right are the same, guys. We're against the state. It's not the mm -hmm. left versus right. It's us against oh, the state. Getting stuck in that, which I was in for a long time. I didn't even call myself right wing till last year. Just full disclosure. No hiding it. I was still scared because even though I was familiar with guys at the Mises Institute, it just still felt so dirty and wrong because when you come from that perspective of just general, oh, I love liberty, but you've never read anything. Like Hoppe says, you just get slogans and you get really excited, but you don't actually read theory until you come across people like Lou who put it in a way that you can understand. Like the secession is libertarian speech by Lou where he describes regime libertarians. Mm. So it, so clicked for me when he describes regime libertarians because I would, you know, I kept thinking, I these people can't be bad people, right? And 
maybe they're just misguided and they're not really defending the state. They're just misguided. And then he, you know, describes them and it's just to a T and you can recognize what these people are actually doing. And, and just going off of what Jared said, when you're, you're demonizing things that normally we wouldn't demonize. I mean, one of the number one questions I get asked when I just mention I'm an ANCAP to people everywhere who aren't familiar with libertarianism or anything at all is, well, what are we going to do? Like, how are we going to keep people safe? <laughs> how, why? Like, if you are familiar with private law society, you just immediately can answer that question. And I remember sitting on Zuby's podcast like two and a half years ago, and I couldn't answer that question. And I was calling myself an anarcho-capitalist. And I thought, oh, I'm in trouble. I don't know anything. Who, like, I, have, I haven't, clearly haven't read enough. And I started digging into Hoppe and Blake Rothbard and Lou much, much more. And then got invited to, in 2018 to the Mises Institute. And that's why I'm here. There's no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I wouldn't be here without Lou Rockwell. And the fact that he's brave enough to say things that, to me, now, you read them. And they might make you feel uncomfortable, like Jared said. But they're not incorrect mm. and we need more of that be willing to say things that might make people uncomfortable but it's just the truth and yeah. and that's all <laughs> it's actually one of the things i have an issue one might not issue with but it's something i've noticed this uh was we handed some of my lou walk lou walker book like it is my litmus test if you enjoy it or not but i have friends i know all my friends i are commies um and if I hand up anything lou walker wrote they're gonna are they gonna they're gonna be so pc about it, they won't be able to actually uh, enjoy or engage with the argument they're going oh, to yeah. read how he wrote about anything and just write him off and that is one of his only problems i have is that he's he's right but if you're not always a little anti-pc he's not accessible to you yeah um th that's that's a that's an interesting just thing about just outreach in general i mean against the left is obviously a book that is the audience is right wingers who aren't libertarians mm -hmm. Yeah. And, li and libertarians who who aren't good libertarians yet. right yeah right they, who aren't good libertarians yet um if your friends are left wing if they're not actual egalitarians and just like whatever is popular uh there's a lot that you can use i mean i mean yeah. the left the right in the state yeah. that's a Is lou it? rockwell book you could give anybody yeah but uh, but against the left obviously not because it's just yeah. the the you know it's a the new paleo uh just the new paleo manifesto but like you could i mean one thing that's great about lou is like and what's great about rothbard and is or or hoppa is all the people who are supposedly the 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 bad guys in the libertarian world the bad guys to the bad libertarians um all have stuff that while whatever they're saying is like controversial they have stuff that's great for whoever to yes. read Whoever. Capitalism versus fascism. Yeah, right. capitalism versus yes. fascism. And, and Hoppe's book, uh, A Theory of Socialism and, Ca and Capitalism. That is a that is the but that is actually my favorite Hoppe book, A Theory of Socialism and Capitalism. A lot of people say democracy, the God that failed, or the economics and ethics of private property. A Theory of Socialism and Capitalism. That is a book that if somebody didn't know who Hoppe was, that called themselves a libertarian. They'd think he was one of the greatest writers and thinkers of all time. Fact. And then and oh, then yeah. and then somebody will poison their mind and say, like, oh, he said this thing about physical removal. He loves helicopters and and whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I love those things. And then we really like he does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I love those things. I mean, that's why I'm a hoppy. And obviously I love helicopters and, and uh, initiating force that, you know, <laughs> um, but, <laughs> clipped. No, <I'm> just <laughs> <laughs> yes. but, um, but yeah, I mean, one thing that's great about Lou and Rothbard and Hoppe is that, like Scott Horton has that line where he says all the time, like reach the left from the left or reach the right from the right or out left, the left or out, out right, the right. I don't agree with out left, the left because libertarians can't do that because we are right wing. Shout right. out Jared. Um, and, uh, but I mean, you can reach somebody who is on the left. Yeah. AKA they just have like mainstream opinions yeah. with anything that these guys write. That's not, that if you just read the room absolutely uh, the, the only thing i would say to that is absolutely 100 percent. you can reach anybody right especially family and even yeah. though families probably harder make could be harder than anything else but you can reach anybody 
it's just when, especially when I say, you know, don't waste your time on the left. And I do say that I say it profusely everywhere. Yeah. I don't, do. don't waste your time on the left. The reason that I say that is because it's per, it, it is a, it is a good general strategy for everyone, right? The general strategy here is appeal to people that you can appeal to easily. People that these ideas are going, not going, you're not going to have to couch them in some explanation or something like that. You can easily explain to a right winger, hey, we need capitalism because it's hierarchical, because it distributes, you know, it crushes these communist leftists. It doesn't, it doesn't bring up the dregs of society, you know, society to, to extreme heights when the, you know, when they're not uh, deserving of it, right? That's an easy sell to a right winger, right? But that's not an easy sell to a leftist, right? Like you got to do what a lot of these leftist institutions that are liber call themselves libertarians do, and say, "Oh, well, look at this study. You know, the study says you know all these degenerate people are better off, and you got to look at this, and this is the way it is." And they're never going to pay attention to that. You know, you're 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 fighting a battle that's really, really, really hard when you can easily pick up a, a MAGA boomer person. Uh, with with a with a small book like you know against the left yeah. you can pick them up with that book like give them that book I'm not going to waste my time right and there's there's a um there there is a return on time investment that has to be considered when you're trying to bring people over to this ideology right? oh yeah and well, just you know, and just to clarify sorry Caleb but uh, yeah just to clarify I wasn't really talking about recruiting from the left because <laughs> I mean I mean I'm a paleo for a reason. Right, I mean, right. like, uh, I mean, I, I explicitly say that, like, the only ground that's actually uh, worth worth treading on is or, or trying to recruit from is the right. I mean, but it's just like if you if you're just having an argument with somebody, even if you're not trying to recruit them, like, yeah, I mean, there, yeah, there are absolutely. things that you could say. But yeah, go ahead. The Jay. reason I, I brought it up about the commie saying is because I have a, one of my friends hopping in my vehicle, give him a drive and my, my phone auto connects himself playing the book on the vibe. He's an environmentalist. Our uh, well, max have played on the environmentalism chapter. I decided to let it ride. Oh, the car ride. It How did that go? Fun. It was fun. It was fun because <laughs> he was just screaming about it the entire time, pretty much. But it was um, <laughs> it was funny because I just, like I decided just to like throw him a little bit. Like, well, why the fuck do I care about air that's not from the AC, man? AC airs better. Like, I just throwed him the entire car ride, and it was a it was a fucking blast. But <laughs> that uh, section. Yeah, I, that section is great. Uh, the environmentalism <laughs> section on against the left, because like, it's funny that the, the sections on feminism and the sections on environmentalism, like every line you could hear somebody like three cars over in your head. Yes. I'm <laughs> schizophrenic. Um, uh, <laughs> just <laughs> screeching about it. Like, like if you're like, if anybody could hear this on the street that just had like normal mainstream opinions, they would roll on the ground. They wouldn't even yeah. know what to do. They'd have they'd have a seizure or something. Yes, like, absolutely. Like, but like it. That's one thing that's like great is because there's whenever you think about what he's saying, like he's just arguing from just like a pure like great libertarian scholarly and right wing culturally perspective. It's yep. not something that should be considered like, oh my oh my goodness, like this is going to make somebody lose their minds. It should be normal opinion. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's just it's just funny. Um, what was I gonna say? I got a question. I had something. Go ahead. You had a thought and it died of loneliness. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> Mac, did you 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 got to meet Lou at the Mises Institute? Yeah, I I did. I, How was that? I don't wanna, I'm gonna cry about it. Um, <laughs> it was it was really good. I didn't get to talk to him a lot, but I did have him. I did have uh have him sign my left right in the state book, and I just went up to him. I I'd have do have to say shout out to my friend TJ Roberts, um, sure. who got me kind of involved with Tho and was like Tho's a good guy you should add him on Facebook and then I got in and actually TJ was there that year and he said you should really go up to him and thank him and I'm at the point I don't know any of these people they're like like Tom Woods was there and he was like you look weird without pink hair which terrified me because of course Tom <laughs> had followed me on Twitter I'm like oh my goodness Tom Woods is looking at my cosplays now I'm shy. I these people were like mythical figures to me. I'd met Ron Paul, but like briefly for like a picture. So I I just walked up to him and I just thanked him and I said, you know, thank you for everything you do, just generic. And he just said, well, thank you, that means a lot. And I walk away, I go, you know, he told me thanks. I go, but you know, he probably says that to everybody. And TJ goes, no, he means that. Like yeah, they yeah. do this because, and that's what I love about Jeff Dice and Tho and all these guys. They are not 
they are not, they are genuinely not doing this because they want to pat themselves on the back <laughs> or because they want to feel important. If they wanted to feel important, they would all be regime libertarians. Yeah. If they really yeah. wanted to feel in the in crowd. They generally, every single person there cares and you feel it when you meet them, when you shake their hand, you know that they mean everything they're saying and it's actually genuinely important to them. And I, I like genuine people i'm sure everybody does but i i just mean you can there's just something very nice about not just feeling like you're just memeing on twitter you're actually meeting people that are making a difference and i i just encourage anyone if if mises has any events just please go you just want to meet lou rockwell and you know it's mm -hmm. it's just really it's very very important it was it was awesome to just make a long story short <laughs> he i asked because he has this kind of reputation amongst people that have not met him or that don't like his writings that he's some kind of crazy right wing the extremist he's those last two not the first one um <laughs> he's so kind in person yes. he and ron paul there's this like sincere genuine like loving kindness that yes develops just who they are it's to sound like a, one of those crystal girls which i'm totally not but not that I need to say that here, but he just has this aura of like, I saw someone on Twitter before I got on described him as like, it's like going walking through a forest and you see like a giant ancient oak and you're just like, wow, like how long, not even necessarily referencing his age, just like how long this person has been here, how hard they have worked and everything they must have seen and know. And when you talk to him, like I said, I was intimidated by a lot of those guys, but especially Lou before I walked up to him. And after I walked away, I go, oh, he's just a normal human. Because I think especially in Liberty Circles, we tend to like, I mean, we're doing a stream about him. But I mean, a lot of people idolize these people, but they're like mythical figures. They're not real people. No, Lou Rockwell is a real person. He's a, an amazing, nice, kind person, like you said. And you feel that when you meet him. That's why I said everybody should really just go meet him because he's not this, you know, crazy, you know, old man sitting in a room by himself. You know, he's, he's, he's everybody that went up to him, he talked to, even though you could tell the year that I was there, he was just like, they were like, oh, he's not really feeling well this year. He came and sat at a table and talked to every single person that came up to him, even if it was just for five seconds, because Obviously, he thinks it's important because it is. So, yeah. I had the opportunity to sit with him up upstairs, right outside of his office at the Mises Institute, for about twenty-ish minutes or so. And I was, you know, I had interviewed him a few times, but I was still slightly nervous because, again, right. it's Lou Rockwell. Right. <laughs> and he was he's so kind and. I, I spoke to him about that. I loved reading about the old right. And that was a topic that he had written about and that I, that I always like uh, reading more about. And then we changed the subject, went on to some other things. And towards the end, when I was leaving, he said, when you write your book on the old right, I, I really would be honored if you'd come here and use our library. I, I'm not writing a book, but you know, I never even, that never even crossed my lips or my mind. I, it, Lou uh, said it. Now you got to do it. I know. You, you kind of got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that he We're would waiting. just offer that and, and he meant it <sighs> seriously. He said, mm -hmm. when you write that book on the old ride, I hope that you'll consider, I'd be honored if you came here and used our library, we've got all of their, those books. Mm -hmm. And I walked out with my wife and I was like, I can't believe he just said that I should write a book on the, you know, <laughs> It's just right. amazing. It's mind blowing. And another story really quick from that that I love. And I I felt guarded to tell this one for a while, but I, I think it's fine. I've, I told it on a on someone's show once. Uh, I had given a speech at a Mises Institute event that weekend out, outside of uh, Auburn. Then we went to Auburn to meet him and we're talking. He asked how it went. And I said, well, I, honestly, I got a little pushback and it surprised me. And he said, how so? And I said, well, I, I, I had mentioned in my speech that we should quit saying that we're neither left nor right. And, and he, 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 that got pushed back and he goes, well, no one says that anymore. And I said, no, sir, <laughs> they do say that. And he goes, not, not outside of Walter block. And I said, uh, actually <laughs> most of the people within the libertarian party say that still. And he goes, well, they're all leftists. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And I, I'm sure he saw like the giant smile, you know, on my face. And my, I was like, yes, sir. 
They actually are. <laughs> yes. That's amazing. I that love so that. You have no idea how happy that makes me. Yeah, that's that's a really <laughs> cool story. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Oh my Hashtag Buck's book. Because mm. now we're gonna bully yeah. you to death. Yes. Right. Yeah, you wanna see the power of democracy, Buck? <laughs> you wanna see what democracy can really do? I will be a very failed author. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if well, nobody cares, I'd love to read another quote from uh, Against the Left. Uh, and this one is particularly uh, one of my absolute favorite quotes because I've paraphrased it, and reutilized it, and expanded upon the idea several times. But here it goes. Uh, the state loves equality as an organizing principle because it can never be achieved. In the course of trying, the state acquires ever more power over ever more practices and institutions. Anyone who questions the premise of equality is hectored out of polite society. Quite a racket. This, and certainly no place for libertarians to be. I mean, what can, more can you say? I mean, the, the, uh, that, there's the core idea, right? The state is leftist, and it's no place for libertarians because we're not leftists. Mm. Bingo. Jared, aren't yes. you uh, aren't you working on something? No, Not shut up, Taylor. That idea. <laughs> no, bully him. <laughs> bully him now. Publicly. Yeah, is, isn't there something productive that you oh, that you yeah. are doing that yeah. that literally takes that line and maybe makes something? Hey, way you're the one that more? said I actually expanded libertarian theory. So you you did, <laughs> and I'm telling you to to do it. Are we allowed to swear on here? Yeah. All right, <laughs> fucking do it, Jared. I, I am, I am. It's just, uh, you know, I work and nobody else our days, and I, I just don't, I, you know, I got a new house. Do what I do. I just quit my on. job to do, you know, make no money off of podcasting. So, yeah, <laughs> fine. And nobody, nobody else is allowed to cuss at Jared. He's my boss. I'm allowed. <laughs> Does that mean I'm allowed to? Oh, yeah, that's true. You are, you are too, Mac. <laughs> but yeah, I, I that that quote is uh, it's inspirational for people and i it's inspirational for me i can't speak for others but it's inspirational for me because it ties so perfectly into to to hoppa's works it ties so perfectly into everything that i've been trying to get across to people this whole time is that libertarianism is right wing it's undeniably right wing and the integration of right wing ideas and libertarian ideas comes to a focal point and that focal point is that we're the same Libertarianism is the truest, purest expression of what it means to be right wing. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it, I will eventually finish the book on this, but mm -hmm. it's a uh, it, it's it's so important that Lou gets if my book ever does anything, if it sells two copies, he deserves that some of that credit because he helped inspire that. I know Jared's one of the people on Twitter that's really shaped my my thoughts a lot. And he knows that. But it's it's so important. And I know. None of us like to take credit. We all want to give all the credit to Lou Rockwell, and it absolutely goes there. But it is important, I think, and I've realized over the years, I love reading. I love talking about reading. I love reading out these quotes. I love tweeting out these quotes. I love making the graphics and putting them out. But unfortunately, not everybody does. And I do think it's important, and that's why I love this entire idea of this live stream. Because I genuinely think there are a lot of people who are going to hear that quote and hear other things. And they're going to maybe actually get the push to read it or just follow some of us on Twitter. And they're going to get exposed to these ideas. And I think just going to events, talking to these people, that's why I said that's important to put emphasis on that too. Because I think just getting exposed to these ideas one way or another. There are so many things I've seen on Twitter that end up I eventually realized that was a Murray Rothbard idea. That was a Lou Rockwell thing. I didn't know it at the time. I mean, I my my YouTube channel subscribers are like, can you just not talk about egalitarianism for one live stream? We understand. <laughs> and I'm like the crazy person pointing at the board with all the, I'm like, no, you don't understand. But There's they, a lot to this. Yeah. You don't actually get it. But it's because I finally read Lou Rockwell and, the dreaded late Rothbard and things like that. And, and it's just so hard to just see people like Caleb was talking about his friends, just seeing that name and brushing it off. Cause I, I just have to think 
no, like, okay, fine. I will print out the PDF and scratch out the name. Read this because you need to read it or I will just talk your ear off about it if I have to. Fine, you don't want to read it? I'll make a video and call it something clickbaity and hopefully you'll watch it and it'll just be that. Um, I have no problem doing that because these ideas need to get exposed and and I'm glad the Mises Institute and Lou Rockwell exist to do that. But I just, it's so, it's so important. There's just so many things that, that I just wouldn't understand and really didn't even realize how much it all traces back to Lou Rockwell until I actually started looking into this stuff and stuff I had seen Jared say on Twitter and other awesome people say on Twitter. And they're like, yeah, you had access to this knowledge too. Actually, you just didn't bother. So yeah, I can't, I can't tell you the number of people that I've come across that claim to be Rothbardians and I'll paraphrase something of Rothbard's in response to them. And they'll be like, you're absolutely insane. I can't believe that you would even <laughs> say something like that. And then I post the quote from Rothbard and they're like, well, I don't have to agree with everything that Rothbard oh. said. You know, it's, it's that, you know, it's, and it's like, like a key, it's always a yeah. key thing that you yeah. paraphrased. And it's like, well, I mean, I, to some extent, yeah. I get what you're saying, but that's kind of a big thing. That's yeah. kind of his yeah. thing. We're, we're talking to you, left Rothbardians, yeah. a.k.a. <laughs> that's Agorist. not real. I'm talking to you, and Jared's talking to you. <laughs> but, I refuse yeah. to believe that's real. I, Caleb, could I read a quote from Go you? Go ahead. This is one of my favorite parts. I didn't even... This is when I, I guess I first read Against the Left. I already had this circled, and it says bingo with a star. Because I think uh, if you've been in the libertarian circles for a long time, this could speak to you. It speaks to the old me. So that's why I liked it a lot. Page 136, fellas and ladies against the left. But if we expect to trick people into becoming libertarians, we will fail. And if we think libertali excuse me, libertarian flirtation with egalitarianism is a good idea, we have already failed. Yes, we do believe in unfashionable things like the abolition of anti-discrimination law. If we didn't, we would not be libertarians. Bound up in the principle of freedom of association is every defining libertarian principle, self-ownership, the meaning of property titles, and non-aggression. And I, I liked that because there was part of me when I was younger in the blue-pilled libertarian days where you do kind of want to fool people, trick people a little bit into, well... You know, it's always to the left. That's always when you do this. And we're really against war and we're for drug legalization. And if you just like those things, come on in. And it really it's doing a, a disservice to to the real ideas of, of libertarianism by trying to trick people like that to getting into your movement. And again, like we mentioned earlier, you should be gatekeeping a lot of this stuff, too. Absolutely. And so uh, I thought that was a wonderful uh, statement by Lou. I love that quote. There, there's, there's something to be said for, for honesty, right? Just being straight with people. It's we are who we are, and we're not making any apologies for it. And I think libertarianism, our libertarians, have fallen into that trap of, of trying to trick people into believing something that you know they don't believe. Uh, you're, you're never gonna reeducate someone, right? We don't try and do that. We just say, you know, we are who we are. If you want to come over and be with us, great. And we'll leave, you know, we'll be away from those other people. That's the, the core belief in libertarianism is separation, right? Well, yes. we believe in separation. We always have and, and many different ways, um, you know, uh, political separation, uh, familial separation, regional separation, even racial separation. We believe in all, all like there's there's no difference between any of them. If you want to separate, you can. And that's you have to defend that. I mean, no matter how uncomfortable it makes you feel if you're a libertarian you have to defend those things and um it 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 hurts me a little bit to see people do what uh, buck just described which is you know come on over you know we're we're anti-war and we're you know uh, you know against these things that you don't like or whatever but what do you end up doing when you do that you're just subverting yourself yes you're allowing yourself to become a leftist in yes. order to pull more people and that to me, is the primary theme of the Libertarian Party, of which I will never 100%. stop hating. Yeah, and uh, you know, shout out, shout out to really, really, really good guys who are part of the LP. I, I have a lot of respect for some of those guys, really, really do.
but you guys got to go. You guys got to leave. You're you're in you're in you're you're in the lion's den. Get out. Um, come to us. Come to us. <laughs> we, We're here. We want you. We don't not want you. We want you. We need people like you yeah. to be on our side. They don't want you. It's made clear repeatedly over and over and over again. You know, God love uh, Josh. Uh, you know, uh, Joshua dude. Smith. God love God love him. He's a, he's a good dude. Nice dude. Uh, he's got a nice, beautiful family, and and they screwed him. They recently just screwed him again, and it's like, when are you gonna learn, man? I love you, but when are you gonna learn? Like, you I gotta was, learn. I was gonna hesitate to say something about that because I didn't want to invoke it, just because, dude, that guy has done so much legwork, and he has, and just because of their their huge concern about optics in the LP, like he's broke any optics. You know I'm the optics officer for hoppyand.org. He has done zero violations. And they're still they still won't. I I, I just I don't get it, man. Uh, c- Josh, come to the GOP. Nothing nothing's good enough for him. Nothing will ever uh, be good enough for them. You've got to be and this is you know this is pervasive in politics anyway, which is you know you got to raise your your king or whatever you're gonna make, right? Like they, they raise him from birth, right? They grow him in the back pasture, right? That's what they do. But that's not who we are, right? Like we're, we're not those type of people. We're the grassroots people. We're the people that are on the ground and you know, that we're, we're real. We, we don't lie. We're not into this um, high level political game that where, you know, you're always a leftist, right? Because that's what ends up happening, right? This is what Rothbard always talked about with the Cato people, right? They want to get invited to a cocktail party or whatever. That's not who we are. We don't want to be those people. And, and that, to me, is really what the LP will always be. It'll just be a hive of leftism forever. It's why Rothbard left. Rothbard saw it coming. He was like, hey, I've dealt with this once before. I'm done. You know, we're out. And Lou was the same way. Lou, in the Rothbard Rockwell report, they both talk about it. We left the Libertarian Party. We're happy that we left the Libertarian Party. You know, there was no games that we're playing trying to, you know, change the Libertarian Party. We don't want to start a new Libertarian Party. Screw the Libertarian Party. We're going to do our own thing. We're going to do it the right way. And we're going to keep out people that clearly haven't been able to be kept out. Lou and Rothbard will always have my respect for that. They will always, because they, it's courage. It takes courage. And I think that that's kind of the theme of, uh, of Lou's uh, career is courage. I think that is a, that is a central theme of his mm-hmm. career. That's why I... I kind of mentioned earlier, I mean, I think multiple of us have. We just respect that he's willing to say things that maybe aren't necessarily popular with who, who, if you want to persuade everyone or pander to as many people as possible, you're not going to say those things. Um, and I think one of one of my biggest issues when just kind of walking through the libertarian meadow, like, where do I fit in here, was I, I kept encountering people that, it just, they said, oh, I want liberty, but it kind of came off to me as just straight up, no, I want to burn everything down. Mm. And I never, I have never, that's why I don't just call myself an anarchist because I've never identified with that. I, there are so many things that I care about, so many institutions, so many groups of people. And I used to be one of those people that said, well, all collectivism is bad. And oh, I'm so, I'm individualist <laughs> yeah. without knowing what any of that meant, of course. But I would say those things. And then I, I don't I think it's an against the left. Uh, Lou says something like um, anarchy is the reverse of chaos. And when I read that, I, I it just clicked with yeah. me because I, I talk about these ideas and people are like, well, you just don't care about anything. You want to burn everything down. And when you read people like Lou Rockwell, like we're talking about meeting these guys in person, that is precisely the opposite of their goal. They want a legitimately better world not out of spite for anyone not to stick their thumb out at their parents or something like that and say see i have this cool new shiny ideology that i get to lecture people about that's never the goal it's nice to feel smart but it's better to know at least in my opinion that you you're telling the truth to the best of your knowledge and that you're not in this to burn everything down you you're in this because of you know getting into hierarchy and and things like that and just order and that's what you need. And I think Jared's absolutely great on this. And obviously Lou Rockwell is too. Um, 
that's not what the state is. And that's what the state is in most people's brains. You talk about it and they say, well, what are we going to do? Like your brain cannot compute what else is there. And it's because I feel so many people don't understand the state is not order. It is chaos because it's, it's leftist. And that's really the fundamental difference, I think, between people who are Lou Rockwell appreciators and people who aren't. Because I think deep down the people that do not like him and think he's, you know, malicious and just trying to own the libs and things like that, they don't understand that it's just the correct position. Right-wing libertarianism is just the correct position. It's not even a dunk on anyone. It's just the more you read and the more you familiarize yourself with Lou's writings and other people's, of course, in the same vein, it, the more that you realize it, that's the only way. This is the only option. And it's not black pilling. It's white pilling. Because as yeah. soon as that clicks for you, yeah. when there are so many people. They're almost there. They're on the right. Like we talked about earlier, there's so many people. You can tell. You look at their tweets and you go, I know you have not read a lick of Rothbard or Hoppe, but man, that's you sound like you're just a Mises Institute lifelong donor right now. And you're just like, if I could just slide this your way, I know you'll get it. And mm. it's, it is white pilling that there are people that just understand that. <laughs> and yeah, lose one of them, obviously. And can I and, just say real quick, uh, if you have not renewed your Mises Institute membership, please go and do that today. Uh, Mises.org. Uh, go, go and I just re up today. I, uh, as a premium member, if, uh, you know, you can do it for as little as I think 25 bucks. So just, just go and do that. Please support the Institute. And also just talking about what Mac was referring to buy the private production of defense from Hans Hoppe yes. and chaos. The was it? Chaos theory from Bob it, Murphy. Yeah. Yes. That discuss that the state is chaos and that, natural order private law anarchy is the natural real order that is it i mean uh, like those books are incredibly important especially if you are somebody on the right that wants to understand how these uh these right-wing and caps these hoppians talk about how the state is a, a means of disorder because it is a leftist institution the private production of defense is invaluable as a as just a document of that. Hundred percent. On the point about um, Lou Walkwell's bravery in starting the uh, Mises Institute, have anyone listened? You did a podcast with Tom Woods uh, a few years ago where he had talked about getting the money together and kind of organizing and getting a phone call from a Coke guy. Anyone else? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah it's a great story. Great. So basically, so they're like, I don't work for you. Like I heard a story, I'm like, yeah, this is my guy. And when I heard that, I'm like, this is this is my guy now. Can, my, can you can you uh, can you uh, relay that for the audience in case they're listening? Um, so if I remember correctly, he was trying to organize the Mises Institute, pretty much, and talking to a few guys about getting some scholars together and kind of starting the institute. And he got a call from I can't remember who, but it was someone involved with the Coke the the, the Coke buzzers. And it basically said, uh, what the hell do you think you're doing? We spent the last several years making Hayek the guy. No one cares about Mises. You're going to undo all the work we did. What do you think you're doing? And Lou responded with, uh, I don't work for you. And kind of did, did it anyway. There was another, kind of there's, a sim there's a similar story that I love too. And I think it was tying back to when Rand was possibly running, put his uh, name in for the GOP presidential candidate. I think this is when this happened. Uh, the New York Times did this article that kind of tied him back to yeah. his dad, of course, and then tied Ron to the Mises Institute and then was trying to make them look like neo-Confederates. Yeah, something. and that, that, that article was titled, Rand Paul Has a Paleo Problem. That's yes. right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, I know that article. Yeah. This reporter, I think they went there. She, I assume, she went there. No offense, Mac. Uh, she went there and, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I think Walter Block was willing to, and he might have given a bit of an interview and then they, they get to Lou and uh, she says, can we get some words from you? And he says, I'm from the New York times. And he says, get out of my building. You're with the enemy. Oh, <laughs> yes. nice. Yes. Yeah. I love that story. Yes. That's amazing. And that's how you know. I, I guarantee you, I'm sure there are interviews where they've talked about it. And, you know, Hoppe's talked about it in interviews, too, talking about the Murray split from, from regime libertarianism and, and those people and all that. Um, you know that there have been offers to shut them up. 
Oh, They're yeah. just a hundred percent, not just from Coke, you know, from other people, just keep it down. We're really like, we're really trying to push this high guy. We're really just early Rothbard, just maybe quiet down on the Rockwell Rothbard reports a little bit. Like, can we not tweet those out? We don't need that bad PR. You know, there's been offers, you know, there's been so many people that, that just were straight up probably willing to pay them off to Big say, money. actually, no. And not just like, oh, well, we'll buy out what you've spent. Probably just straight up hush money, not yeah. even being conspiratorial. You well, know that's happened. Look, look at some of these post Mises.org institutes and things like that that have come up in the interim, yes. right? There's a lot of money out there floating around for stuff that is not related to, to Mises.org, right? Oh, yeah. I, I can't I can't imagine a scenario in which Lou has not been offered a ton of money to change the direction of the Institute or let some of it go. And he just hasn't done it. That is that is amazing. And I'm sure it has not always been easy uh, for Mises. You know, it, I'm sure it has not always been you know easy. I'm, I'm sure it's been hard. I mean, they make... Uh, they make a decent amount of money. They're not a large, huge player, right? They're not a huge player. And that's because of this. And that's great, though. I, they do such good work with such little money in comparison. That's why I'm saying go to Mises.org and, and donate. But, um, you know, the, there's a, millions of dollars at play here, right? Uh, I'm not I'm not kidding. Like, I've done a lot of the open secret searches and stuff on these libertarian, quote unquote, libertarian places. There's a lot of money floating around. And it is it, it is an exemplification of courage to be able to turn something like that down. One of the things that I've really enjoyed about Lou Walker is that I can basically hand against the left any good Catholic and they're going to be on my side with my end of the book. I've done that. I have a friend who was Catholic, and he's called he called himself a classical liberal because he likes Jordan Peterson mm. and Dave Rubin. I hand him against the left. He's the Mises loving Waspot Hopper guy now. Oh, and now, now book. and now he's Orthodox. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> he's, he is looking into it. This is kind of like no, 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 too far, too far. Come a little back. But um, no, he, it is. As one with him against the left, I know I can, I can hand against the left to like anyone, and the stuff on the Gautanism, the family, it would just reshape anyone's viewpoint if the religious or at all like at all conservative and so i, I have a lot of, i have a lot of catholic friends i said like, hey we do walk well hey we uh anything like any basically i, I push walk well more than hop i think because he's he is a, he's catholic and that kind of has some sway with some other catholic people i talk to but gary north mm. <laughs> oh gary gary north on the on the um anti-catholic stuff you might you might want to watch that. but um who's, uh, but who's uh, gary north? do not let them who's gary north gary. oh, that oh no oh, who's gary <laughs> north down. Um, Write it down, Caleb. But uh, yeah, um, spend fifteen bucks one month. Subscribe to GaryNorth.com. Read all of his economics articles, and then read a lot of his stuff. Uh, he gets in a lot of trouble because he talks about like I don't know, like Christian punishment societies. Like he, he's not an anarchist, but he's uh, uh, what is was he call himself? A formalist or something like that. No, no, that's that's uh Yarvin. Yarvin. Sorry, yeah, that's Yarvin. Um, but uh, damn, I forget what he says. But um, he's just like a Christian theocrat, but like small communities, and he's always been considered to be like a paleo libertarian because he's like a Mises Institute guy, because he wrote a bunch of books on on like yeah, honest money. Uh, somebody just commented that's a great book to give Christians that combines Austro like. Austrian theory, Austrian monetary theory with Christian ethics and also the ethics of money production from George Guido Halsman, who is one. a cat, who is a Catholic. Um, that's a, that's a great book also. Can, can we just take three seconds and appreciate someone who doesn't get a lot of credit, which is Hulsman? What, oh, what, what a unbelievable guy. Unbelievable. Like, unbelievable. I love that guy. He's awesome. And, and for being like Hoppe's legit protege, Who's still in? I think because he he doesn't get as much love because he's still in academia. Yeah. Um. Once he gets out and he can really like write a oh, lot it's more, gonna be, I it's think, gonna be. I think. Oh, bad. it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be great. I can't wait. I, I just started reading Essex and Money Production from him. Um, which is great, and I think I have a I have already book of his a uh, uh, Mises last night liberalism, which has been fantastic. He's he's pretty great. I'm enjoying his work. He's got a great article that he put out not long ago about uh, right wing militias. 
Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember because we made the yeah. laser eye holesman meme because we were like unleash the holesman squads. That's <laughs> yeah. it's awesome. Check that out. Really Hol holesman legitimately uh endorsed localized right wing death squads. squads. Yeah, he really did. <laughs> <laughs> like, in he like, like a very yeah, in like a very scholarly that. way. Like yeah. he was just it was, like it was I'm a teacher, but you should like this this like meme that you guys talk about all the time, like I'm down. He's like <laughs> he's like send me the skull mask. I need that. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we've gone for an hour and a half. We've gone for 30 minutes over the fake Italian stream, and they only got 49 views, and I'm pretty sure we beat that already. Oh, good. What's, what's the goal? I, my goal was to not only go longer than it was, but they've had two weeks to only get 49 views. I want to have more views by the end of the night than they did, which was the goal. That's great. Uh, I, was, I think I, we it did. It didn't seem that long. It did not seem like an hour and a half. It went by really fast for me. So. I don't know. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, it's because you love talking to me, Jared. I, it's true, but <laughs> so, I, I really do. And I'm, I'm going like, to keep going y'all off. And I like yeah, talking to going. Buck. I t like talking to Buck and, you know, Max there too, but that's enough. <laughs> yeah. I'm just here for the views. So people go, that's oh, true. girl, and they click. <laughs> that's that's hey, really you got to make her the thumbnail. You got to get I'm one of the I'll make you a those. sweet thumbnail, Caleb. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Well, it's been a lot of fun. Everyone go ahead and give your plugs. And then um, I'll plug the I'll plug the music. I'll plug the music in the books again. So. A buck go first. What's he plugs? Uh, well, you could listen to Counterflow with Buck Johnson is the podcast. It's uh, anywhere you get a podcast, you'll find it there on YouTube as well. And the site is counterflowpodcast.com. You you've done interviews with Lou Walker, haven't you? Do you do you happen yes. to know the numbers of those episodes or excited to find them? Because I want to put them in the description so people can watch I, those. I, I will get that to you. The last one I did with them, the show for those who are new to it, used to it used to be called Death to Tyrants, and that's it was Death to Tyrants both times I've had Lou on. Um, the last one I did with him was during right before the election, and it was my favorite, probably my favorite episode ever. It's my favorite episode of your show. It was just I, I, at one point, I just a, a teaser for you guys who have not listened to it. I asked him, this is again, right before the election leading up to it. And I said, there's a lot of libertarians that aren't sure what to do right now. We're kind of in a, do I go to the LP and vote or do is, you know, Trump, you know, a lot of people have issued voting for him. Of course, you don't want to vote for the other one. And uh, what do we do? Do you have any advice? And he, without even a breath of hesitation, he says, you got to do the right wing thing. That's what you've got to do. Oh, and yeah. it was before I was doing video, but I like raised my hands. Oh. And I was like, oh, yes. Do the amazing. right wing thing. Lou Rockwell. It's good. Yeah. That's what you got to okay. do. Hey, Love that it. is, that sounds like a quote image for hopping that or. Yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> I look forward to seeing that one. Uh, Taylor, give you a plug. Let people find you at. All right. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. T underscore Shiring. Um, S H I R I N G. Anybody who's not watching the video. Um, and uh, yeah, just hit me up on there. If you ever want to talk Hoppa, you ever want to talk paleo stuff, you ever want to talk GOP, you ever want to talk shit on the, L on the LP, I'm down. Um, and uh, yeah, you can add me on Facebook, whatever. I'm not a non. So just <laughs> anywhere you want to talk, come talk. Um, shout out hoppian.org. Uh, yeah. I mean, we'll get everything running soon. Everything will be up. I got some stuff to write. Max got some stuff to put up, and uh, Jared's got a book to write. So, see this, uh, Mac. Give you give you plugs. Where can people find you at? So you can pretty much find everything my YouTube and all my social media at kenziepuff.com. Uh, I have a newsletter because I I'm a very failed newsletter writer apparently. <laughs> Um, just in case, cause I have been kicked off of things before, but if you want to get in touch with me, everything's, uh, kenziepuff.com. Uh, Zed, where can people find you at? Uh, so, uh, I, the other two have, uh, plugged hopping.org enough. So uh, definitely check that out, but, uh, I've said it two times, so I'll make it three. Please donate to Mises.org. Um, I, I'm not published there. I, I've never asked to be a publisher. Um, but uh, Mises.org is is where all of this happens, right? It's where it all came from. It's where it all started. Um, you can find me at In Democracy on Twitter. Um, please tweet out that hashtag Buck's book because I would <laughs> love nothing yes. more than to see him write that book. Well, we also got Zaywood's um, book in the comment now. Oh, so no. Looks like we got oh, no. Look what I've done. Thank you, Marshall. 
<laughs> oh no. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll proofread yours if you proofread mine. How about? Oh that? lord. All right. I, I need to just get. My, my, can Michael Malice ghostwrite mine? That's there right. you go. <laughs> there we go. But well, um, before I give uh, my plugs, I want to plug uh, who's like strategy who, his whose idea was this his idea to do the podcast he sadly couldn't make it tonight he's got some lame thing with his girlfriend or something they're so um, so cute so everyone go go follow strategy d on twitter it's at strategy d a uh, great dude my twitter is a uh, kid 549 don't follow me um yeah everyone go buy against the left by lou walker it's one of my favorite books go buy it um, today right now yes, you can get right it now or right I, I think i have and I, donate I think this is the number one thing I've said on Twitter. Every few weeks, I go to a phase. I mean, I say the book to Twitter again. Like, hey guys, go buy the book. It's or go read it online. It's like the PDFs free. Just download it and read it. But uh, yeah, but, yeah. Seen, how much? How much is it? How much is against the left? I think it's I like eight bucks. But Come yeah, eight so bucks. It, it's like it's it's ten bucks, and with the discount, if you're a Mises member, it's probably like eight bucks. Go there buy that, go. and go buy getting libertarianism right. You get those two books, and you're well on your way to being a great libertarian. I, I have tweeted out both of those books and said these are the number the, 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 I lost my words for a minute. Fuck, I'm tired. The two, uh, fuck, I can't get the sentence out. Forget it, man. I, 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 got, me. I got a plug real quick too. Google Rockwell, excuse me, Rothbard Rockwell Report or oh, go yeah. to Rockwell, excuse me, I keep seeing I'm putting his name first. Uh, go to Rothbard Rockwell Report .substack.com and you can see our friend Tho Bishop has the uh, privilege and honor of republishing a lot of the Murray Rothbard Lou Rockwell reports from the 90s period that we're talking about. And it can give you kind of an insight onto where things were back then and to it, the, what Taylor said earlier, how they kind of mirror things uh, right now. Oh, man, what I was going to say. Uh, top, of the, top of the description of the video is a donation page for the Mises GOP. Uh, if you would like paleo stuff and you actually want to make some make some progress and not give money to the MPC, the uh, LPMC or the LP means it's GOP. Give them some money. Shout out Andrew. Um, good dude. Yep, yeah, good absolutely. Dude. Well, that's the end of it. Everyone have a good night.